Good morning, everybody. It's great to see you all here this morning. Uh, it's great to have you all out. My name is Ruben. I am uh, one of the youth workers here in Willowfield. If you've been coming uh, for a long time, you, you might know who I am. But if you've only joined recently or you've only started coming to Willowfield recently, you might not have a clue who I am. I was off on furlough there for a while, but I'm back. and I'm so glad to be here. I'm so glad to get the gala this morning uh, to open God's word and to share with you guys. If you've been here the last number of weeks, then you, can prob you could probably come up here yourself and give this next little announcement. It's a wee bit about health and safety, but we just want everybody to feel as, as safe and as welcome as possible here. And we know that each and every one of us, there's most, we're most likely at different stages in this journey or, or have different views uh, on how best to do things. But like we said, we want everyone to feel as welcome and as safe as possible. So we've decided that we would love everyone just to sit in their, their family bubble, or if you're here as an individual, then we do ask that you would save three seats either side of you. Hopefully when you came this morning, you were welcomed by one of the welcome team, and they would have been smiling beneath their face covering. You wouldn't have been able to see it, but they were, there was a big smile uh, ready to welcome you, and hopefully then they, they showed you to your seats. In terms of, of face coverings today, we do ask that if you are moving around uh, for any reason, um, then please do keep that, that face covering on as well. And when it comes to worship, we're really excited that actually we can sing together again. For a long time, we haven't been able to. We've, we've just had to be still. And it's been an incredible season to actually refocus ourselves about what worship really is. It's asked a little bit more of us. It's asked us to, to stop for a moment and to think and reflect before we come into a time of worship. And it's been more about a posture of worship than about saying or singing something. But we actually, this morning, we do get to do that. We do get to sing, but we want to also bring together that posture of worship before anything else. If you would like to sing, we do ask that you would wear a face covering this morning as well. And again, that's just so that everybody here feels as welcome and as safe and as comfortable as possible. So we're going to come into a time of worship here. The band are going to lead us, and I would love if you'd stand with me if you're able, and I'm going to lead us in a, a prayer and also just read to you from Psalm 95, which is itself a call to worship. It talks a little bit about our posture before we come to God and worship. So it says this, 
Psalm 95. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his for he made it and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Father, we thank you for this time and we can gather together and we can lift your name high with with our voice, with our singing. But Lord, I pray that this morning that you would be lifted high in our hearts. Lord, we ask that your spirit would would do a work within us, Lord, to, to bring us to our knees, to give us a posture of worship this morning as we lift your name high. So Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit would move this morning, that it would speak to us, that your word would challenge us, that our worship would be a sweet sound to your ear today. And then we say, come Holy Spirit. And we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I that the highest king would welcome me. I was lost, but he brought me in his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free. child of God, yes I am. Free at last. Free at last he has ransomed me, his grace runs me. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes he died I'm a 
child of God. Yes, I am. Father, in my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Our shame was deeper than the sea. Your grace is deeper still. Who, Lord? Who, O oh Lord, could save themselves? Their own soul could heal. Our shame was deeper than the sea your grace is deeper still cause you alone can rescue you alone can save you alone can lift us from the grave you came down to find us let us out of death You're the giver of life. We lift up our eyes, lift up our eyes. You're the giver of life. We lift up our eyes, lift up our eyes. You're the giver of life. We lift up our eyes, lift up our eyes. You're the giver of life. We lift up our eyes, lift up our eyes. You're the giver of life. Lift up her eyes, lift up her eyes, you're the giver of life. You alone can rescue, you alone can save, you alone can lift us from the grave. You came down to find us, let us out of death.
I'm the curate of Lisburn Cathedral. And I'm a hospital chaplain in the Diocese of Cork, Cloyne and Ross. I'm Bishop of Maze and Kildare. And I work in the parish of Ratmines with Harold's Cross. I'm Bishop's Curate for the Meville group of parishes here up on, on the Inishone Peninsula. I'm the Rector of the Parish Church here in Balna Mallard. I'm the Dean of uh, St Mary's Cathedral in Limerick and Rector of Limerick City Parish. And I'm a Curate in St Mark's Parish Portadown. I'm not a farmer, but I've lived in many rural communities. So I, I know what animals do and I know the hard work that farmers put in. It's just a lovely place to minister and to bring the gospel and to receive because the people are of great faith. What inspired me into hospital chaplaincy was being able to be alongside people, people who are, who are vulnerable, who are frightened, who are afraid as well as having lots of opportunities to rejoice and to celebrate with people who get good news, uh, who are well again. Never, never imagined being a bishop. And sometimes people would have teased me and said, ah, oh, you'll be the first woman bishop. And I thought, do you know me at all? <laughs> Starting off as a youth worker, and that gave me a taste for ministry that I think I never forgot. And during a vacancy at one retired clergy, just to ask me straight out, have I ever considered life within the church? And it's sparked a, a flame really a, a, that I started questioning maybe, and then explored it and looked at various options. And one thing led to another. I love the intergenerational feel of what our church community has. Uh, and I love people to feel part of the bigger church. And so I set up a cycling group for our mental health and to, to keep fit, to, to get people together so they can ask questions about God, talk about faith and have the freedom to do that. And I'm a firm believer that, you know, people want to belong somewhere. The chaplaincy that I'm involved with in Balna Mallard is the chaplaincy for the football club, Balna Mallard United. I knew nothing about football at the time. I know a lot more now. I like to see the church being out in the community rather than trying to get the community into the church. A, a very important part of our work is, for example, to go into the schools, the, particularly the Church of Ireland schools, but also the community colleges and share good news and, and help the kids, the older kids in particular, think about ethical questions and how this relates to faith in their lives and their futures. I love what the church is and what it's called to be and, uh, and all the variety that there is in the church. I think I have a, a, a real low boredom threshold, so I, I love the ministry because it's very varied. No one week is the same. This morning we welcomed the Hungarian ambassador uh, to the cathedral. Uh, this afternoon I'm organising flower rotas. Uh, this evening I'm going to sit on the board of a, a secondary school. No one day is the same. It's one of the great joys and privileges of, of ordained ministry. I want to make a difference. I feel a real sense of privilege that this is my call, but it wasn't in the plan. <laughs> I have to, to, to live and be known by my authenticity as a Christian. We listen to connect to the other person. It's got to be about connection because Jesus, that's how Jesus did it. He connected, he connected one-to-one -one with people. One of my biggest passions is to see people serve the local church. And what brings my heart so much joy is just seeing people do the things that God has gifted them with. I think at the root of calling, all human beings were called back to God. It's about a resonance that goes deep within your soul that ties into the love of God that he has for people. I actually resisted ordination for a period of time uh, I was working in business and this sort of rising innate sense of needing to respond was bubbling up. For me it was a process, it was a journey over years of God just uh, doing and working in and through me. Ordination is a very definite calling uh, and I'd really encourage people to at least consider it and if it's not for you, absolutely fine because it has to be for you and it has to be a calling. When it sort of crystallised was the moment the Archbishop of Dublin contacted me to say 
yes, we believe this calling is for you. Um, but I still felt a sense, it's still up to me to respond to that. I still saw it as an invitation. Um, so, but that was a very, very important moment. And there have been a number of moments along the, my journey like that. Don't stop asking God through your life about what he wants you to do. And there's such a joy and a privilege in uh, being with people and leading a diocese. I absolutely love it. When I first felt that initial call, I was, I was so reluctant. I felt like I responded to this innate call God put on my heart. And so everything flows back to that. And when I think about uh, what I wanted to do with my life before and, and where I'm at now, I think there's no way I would be fulfilled in any other role. anybody has uh, felt a stirring this morning um, as you watched that video, please do come and have a chat with me or with the Reverend David Jardine and we would love to pray with you and listen to what God is saying to you. I have just a quick announcement and it's about our general vestry meeting on the 7th of October. It's a Wednesday night at half past seven here in church. If you're registered um, for our general vestry, you're very welcome to come along and vote. We're going to be voting for our select vestry, our parochial nominators, the ones that get to choose the new minister for this church. Um, we do have some who are doing a good job at the minute, but we're going to need some new ones um, into the future. And so we're going to vote for them and then for folk to represent us um, at, a, at a kind of more national and diocesan level. So please come along and vote. It'll be a short meeting. I will give a very short address on what ministry we've been doing since 2019, just to update everybody, and then there'll be a financial report, and, and then we'll, we'll do some voting. So it'll be great to see you there on that evening, half past seven, 7th of October, here in church. It's a Wednesday night. There are posters in the door, but you may miss them on the way in. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Okay, so we're going to open God's word together now, so I'd love it if we could just pray before we do that. Heavenly Father, thank you that you speak to us. Thank you that you speak to us in all different types of ways, Lord, but I thank you that primarily one of the ways that you do speak to us is through your holy word, and it's how you've, you've spoken to us for for centuries, Father, and I pray that this morning you would open our ears and open our hearts ready to receive from your word. We ask for you to have your way now, Lord. Amen. Okay, so who here this morning has had a cup of coffee already? Hands up if you've had a cup of coffee. Great. Any coffee snobs in, in church this morning? Is anyone willing to, to confess? Yeah, okay. Yeah, you've got your coffee with you. It's probably like a nice V60 filter or something. Who knows? It's funny, this week, uh, Mark, our pastor, he sent out an email to like everyone within the church. And at the very start of this email, he went on to talk about how he really can't stand, uh, like, you know, what sort of coffee is it? Like, um, you know the coffee, oh, the word's forgotten, but the, the, you, you spoon it out. What's that called? Instant coffee. He, he hates instant coffee. And like these coffee purists, they absolutely, they turn their nose up at the thought of uh, scooping in a few granules, pouring in a bit of water and, and working away in your cup of coffee. Or they, they squirm at the idea of putting milk into your coffee as well. It's funny, this week as well, I was flicking through Facebook and the advert came up for McDonald's where basically there are different people going around in search for a simple cup of coffee, but quickly they realize they're in over their heads. And it, it gave me a, a bit of a laugh. And I thought, you know what? It lasts one minute. I'll show you guys as well. It has very little to do with our sermon, I'll, I'll be honest with you. But maybe it might give you a wee chuckle. If you're watching online now, the, the audio may cut out for a minute. And that's to protect us um, for a wee moment as in terms of adverts and all that there. But watch together with us here.
love that from McDonald's, just wanting to keep things simple. And this coffee culture has been, it's been crazy, hasn't it? For like the last maybe 10 or 15 years, you can barely go down the street with find, without finding like an artisan uh, coffee shop where you're spending big money. And do you know what the, the latest craze is? If you're over in somewhere like London or, or Melbourne, there's this thing happening now where people are getting really into pure water. It's not coffee anymore, it's all about pure water, like unfiltered water, straight from the spring. It hasn't gone through any lead piping. There's no like fluoride in it to clean it out. It's just straight from the spring and people are paying crazy money for it. People are paying up to 60 pounds for a bottle of this pure, pure water. And why on earth am I talking about this this morning? Well, I'm not here to advocate you guys being these coffee purists or water purists. But last week when we looked at 2 Timothy chapter 1, there was a challenge to be faithful. Well, today as we look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, the challenge that, is, that we want to pull out of this here is that we are to be pure. We as individuals are to be pure and that we are actually to call upon the Lord with a pure heart. I want to read uh, to you guys from 2 Timothy chapter 2, and I'm going to read verses 15 to 22, and the words should come up on the screen so you can follow along with me. It says this, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Avoid godless chatter because those who indulge in it will become more and more ungodly. Their teaching will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hymenaeus and Philetus who have departed from the truth. They say that the resurrection has already taken place and they destroy the faith of some. Nevertheless, God's solid foundation stands firm, sealed with this inscription. The Lord knows those who are his and everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. In a large house, there are articles not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Some are for special purposes and some for common use. Those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be instruments for special purposes, made holy, useful to the master, and prepared to do any good work. Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Now there's loads in this passage this morning that talks a lot about things like false teaching as well, but we wanna lean into this idea, that little bit at the end about having a pure heart and that importance. Now what is it when we think around, when we think of this idea of purity? Maybe within the, the context of church this morning, your mind straight away goes to something along the lines of, of sinlessness or holiness, or maybe you're thinking along the lines of, of like relational purity, sexual purity, but actually I want us to, to take a slightly different approach to it this morning. And to do that, we're gonna look at a couple of different verses um, from around the Bible, but the first that I wanna to look at very briefly is Psalm 24, verses three to four. They're not gonna come on the screen, but I'm gonna read them to you. It simply says, who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? And then it says this, the one who has clean hands and a pure heart. Who has clean hands and a pure heart. So I guess it, it asks this question then, well, what, or we can ask this question, what are clean hands and what is a pure heart? I think when it's talking about hands, we can kind of get our head around this. It's maybe talking around deeds, it's talking around living right, doing good instead of evil, you know, using our body for good. And then when it comes to hearts, when it comes to talking about a pure heart, it's talking a bit more about our inner world, our, our, our thought life, our inner being. And I think for each of us, it's probably easier to understand the concept of clean hands. I think that's something that's kind of inbuilt in the culture that we should do good we should be good people, we should do good deeds and live right. But the state of our hearts is so, so crucial. In the book of Matthew, it says that out of the overflow of our hearts, the mouth speaks. So what that, what that means is that our bodies, our living, our works, they all line up with what is going on 
in here. They all line up with our heart. So when we think around purity, and when, we, when you look at the kind of the definition of purity and you unpack a little bit, one of the ways that it has helped to define purity is it talks of purity as singleness. Purity as singleness. So imagine purity of heart as being singleness of heart. If you can think of that this morning, singleness of heart. Now Jesus said, he said, blessed are the pure in heart for they will see, they will see the kingdom of God. Last week, Jenny and I, my wife, we, we, we actually bought a new car. And this is something that had been on the horizon for a while. Both of our cars were starting to, to be on, uh, on, the, on the brink and it was lots of things going wrong. We we're having to pay money to fix this and fix that. So we'd been saving up a little bit and we knew that we were gonna have to buy a new car. And we were looking online, looking at all different types of cars and the thing was we had two very different opinions on what to get. Jenny being the great mum that she is, she wanted something super practical, something that you could fit the pram in the back, the shopping in the back, the baby in the back seats with the, the, the child seat that could be easily cleaned, that all the mess could be gotten rid of. Whereas to be honest, I wanted the Batmobile. I wanted something that was gonna be looking really cool that you could kind of have the window down, arm out, it cleaned up well, I wanted that. But we settled for, for something in the middle and we managed to, to find this car that it, it looked lovely, it caught my eye. There was something about it that I thought, this looks a bit unique. I really like how this cleans up and the spec of it and the wheels, it's, it's great. So we went and we visited the, the car guides and we had a, a chat with the guy and we had a wee test drive and we decided, yeah, this, this is it. This is the one. So we, we did the deal, we, we shook the guy's hand and uh, we didn't shake his hand. We, we fist bumped or elbow bumped because of social distancing, but um, we, we went for it, we got the car. And ever since that moment of getting the car, when we drove it out of the car garage, I've been seeing this car everywhere. Like every street I drive down, I'm seeing like two, three, four of this exact type of car, the same colors, the same spec, the same wheels. It's, it's as if I can't go anywhere without seeing it. And I think the reason behind that is, is because I've had a singular focus for the last while on this type of car. I now had eyes to see this car because it was my only focus for such a time. A pure heart is a focused heart. A pure heart is a focused heart. It's a heart with a singular focus. In the book of Matthew in chapter six, Jesus, he, he talks a little bit around this. He talks about this area of, of singleness of our devotion and our focus. And I wanna read to you this passage. It's a couple of verses from 19 through to 24. And again, they're gonna come up on the screen. Jesus says this. He says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermins do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body and if your eyes are healthy, then your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, then your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, then how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And here Jesus is addressing singleness in the area of devotion and in the area of focus. And he talks about the focus of our wealth. He talks about the focus of our eyes and he talks about the focus of our service. He, he says, where your treasure is, that's where your heart's gonna be also. So the things that you value most, the things that you hold dear, the things that you, 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 you cling to the, the closest, that's where your heart is gonna be also. And he says, if your eye is, he uses this word healthy, but in the King James Version, the word healthy actually isn't there. They, they opt for a different word. They opt for the word single. If your eye is single. And then he goes on to say, nobody can serve two masters. It doesn't work. At some point you're gonna love one and you're gonna hate the other. Or you're gonna be devoted, completely devoted to one and then eventually you're gonna end up despising the other. And, and what this is actually unpacking is an idea called dualism. 
And dualism is basically, it's like, it's like being divided. It's competing, it's being divided within us. And see, dualism, whenever it comes to our relationship with Jesus, it's crippling. It is crippling, it unfocuses us, it keeps us from seeing God and his kingdom clearly, and it actually, it stunts our growth in him. But we can all too easily get caught up in serving two masters, can't we? We say, I, I love God, but also we, we love and cling and pursue other things. We say, God, your will be done, but also we say, God, your will be done, but my will be done also. Or even we say, God, your will be done if my will be done also. But dualism doesn't work. Jesus says that eventually we're gonna love one or hate the other. King David in Psalm 86, he says this here, he says, give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name, Lord. And we know that, that this idea of the fear of the Lord is something that we want, that we should be praying for as well. And actually David, he unpacks this and says there is a connection between fear of the Lord and the state of our heart. And when we are undivided, how can we fear the Lord? Or when we are divided, how can we fear the Lord? And then James, in his book, in chapter four, verse eight, he challenges the people and says, purify your hearts, you double-minded. So it leaves us with a question this morning. What am I allowing to sit on the throne of my heart? Who am I allowing to sit on the throne of my heart this morning? Is it Jesus? Or am I letting something else in? Am I, am I asking Jesus to compete for the throne of my heart this morning? Because at the end of the day, there is only room for one. I said that we're gonna jump around all different passages and we are in the book of Mark as well, in chapter 10, Jesus, there's an account where a young man comes to Jesus. He's a rich young man and he comes to Jesus and he says, Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Like, tell me the secret, what is it? And Jesus simply says to him, well, have you lived your life in this way? Have you followed these rules? Have you, have you lived your life like this? And the rich young man says, yes, I've done all that. I'm doing all that. I've been doing that since I was a kid. That's great. I'm on board with that. But then Jesus says, he looked upon him. He tells him that he loves him and says, but you lack one thing. He says, I want you to go and I want you to give up your possessions. And I want you to give them to the poor. And you can imagine for this rich young man that it's like the sucker punch. It's like the gut punch, like, oh, you want me to give up all of my possessions, but I, I have a lot of possessions. I'm rich, I'm wealthy. I've worked hard for these possessions and you now want me to, to give them away for free to the poor? But you see, Jesus in this moment, for Jesus, it wasn't even about possessions it wasn't even about the wealth it was about what was on the throne of this young man's heart and Jesus knew that it wasn't him you know we come to church and we sing this song it's one of my favorite songs powerful song that we sing here in Willowfield but there's that line where it goes you have no rival you have no equal and that is so true of God but is that true of our hearts? Is that true of God in our hearts? That we ask Jesus to have no rival or no equal in here? So what do we do about all that? Well, I guess it's kind of as simple and as complicated as this. It's just we surrender. We got to surrender to Jesus the things the desires of our heart, the things that we are putting on that throne every single day. And you know what? We have to seek first the kingdom of God. And that takes some action from us. It doesn't just happen in a moment. It actually takes some action to daily come before God and to give him his right place in our hearts. So as we begin to kind of finish, there's another story in the, in the book of Mark again. And and in chapter four, it's a, it's a parable that I'm sure so many of you will have heard of before. And it's a parable called the parable of the sower. And it's a story about a, a farmer who was scattering seed around his farm on all different types of land, all different types of soil. And one of the soils that he scatters the seed on is a soil that is full of 
thorns and bristles and weeds. And he says that as he scattered the, the seed, the seed grew up, but the thorns grew up and they wrapped around the crop and they choked it to death. And as Jesus went on to unpack what this meant, in speaking about the thorns and the, 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 the weeds, he said, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth and the desires for other things, they come in and they choke the word, making it unfruitful. So the worries being our anxieties, our fears, all our, all our concerns, all the things that keep us up at night, and then the deceitfulness of wealth, you know, that, that lie that is told to us constantly, that, that carrot that's dangled in front of us saying, pursue wealth, pursue money, and happiness is gonna come as a result. Or the desires for other things, those things that, that, that we just love, like for you, you can, you can put in whatever it is for you there into that gap. They're choking the word and they're, they're making us unfruitful. And I think sometimes we can ask ourselves this question, like why am I not seeing fruit in my life? Why from that moment whenever I prayed that prayer to kind of give my life to Jesus, why have I not seen change? Why have I not seen fruit in my life? And maybe, maybe part of the reason that may be is because we're allowing competition with other desires in our heart to go up against the word of God. Instead of pursuing Jesus, instead of pursuing righteousness and pursuing truth and pursuing his word and his kingdom, we're pursuing these other things instead. Would you stand with me just as, as we finish? I realize that this morning, this message isn't one where you, you head out and you're leaping with joy and, and it's great, but it's a, it's a moment to, to check ourselves. It's a moment to do some inward looking some heart surgery, if you want to put it that way. To ask the question, what is it that sits on the throne of my heart? And then it's an opportunity to give Jesus his rightful place. For us to be people who call upon the Lord with a pure heart, a focused, singular heart for Jesus. That we would be people useful to the master, prepared to do any good work. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word this morning. I thank you for your truth. And I thank you that you love us, Lord. That you relentlessly pursue each and every one of us. But Lord, in the honesty of our hearts, so often we can pursue other things. So Lord, I ask that your Holy Spirit this morning would, would do a work in our lives. That it would reveal to us more and more that what it is that we are pursuing, what it is that we are allowing to sit on the throne of our hearts. And in that moment, Father, would you give us the courage, the boldness, all that it takes to set them aside, Lord, and to give you your rightful place. Do that work now, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. We ask this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. How great is our God? Sing with me, how great is our God? And all will see how. Great. How great is our God, sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice.
This next part is a response. Father, would that be true of our hearts, Lord, that we can declare that you are a name above all names, that in our hearts we can declare you are worthy of all praise, Lord. We pray against the worries of this life and against the deceitfulness of wealth and the desires for other things, Lord, and we just, we ask that you would reveal once again, Lord, the state of our hearts. Lord, would you go before us now as we leave? Would you bless us, Lord, in all that you have for us this week before we gather together again next week? Lord, we ask all of this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Guys, you can grab a wee seat there if you'd like. Just a couple of wee announcements for you before, uh, before you head on. Yesterday was, was Kingdom Women um, with New Wine. It was online and if you would have loved to have seen that but didn't get a chance to then, you still can. It's still going to be on the New Wine Facebook or YouTube channel, so you can sign on there and, and watch that. We really want to thank everybody for their input over the last season and um, with the food store. People have been coming and dropping off food for a long, long time now, and it's almost overwhelming. Well, it is overwhelming, um, the response there, but we want to encourage you to, to, to keep doing that. And if you would like to drop any food into the food store, you can do so on a Thursday between 10 
and 12 a.m. just across in the halls. So just as we begin to leave, I know the temptation now is service over, up and head out, but I ask that if you wouldn't mind just waiting for uh, the welcome team just to come and to, to guide you out, if you wouldn't mind just waiting um, for their instruction. And then when you do get outside, please feel free to hang around and chat and catch up out there. That would be amazing. Thank you guys for coming along today and we really look forward to, to seeing you next week or thank you for listening online and we look forward to joining with you again next week. Hope God bless.